Welcome back to tutorial series. We have been trying to learn the applications of linear second order differential equations. Now let's check out spring mass systems. This is the static equilibrium state and this is the state where external force is applied. External force is applied in this direction. This is the object. This is the spring and mg is its weight. The ky is the restoring force which will be applied in the opposite direction. And damping frictional force will also be in the opposite direction which is given by C dy by TT. Now the net force acting on the mass will be minus C dy by DT minus Ky plus F of T which is the external force applied. From Newton's second law we understand the net force is M A which is mass into acceleration. Acceleration is given by D square Y by DT square where Y is the displacement. Now, my, on applying the value of F net here, minus C dy by dt minus Ky plus F of t is equal to md square y by dt square. Now, on simplifying this, we get md square y by dt square plus C dy by dt plus Ky which is equal to F of t as a general equation for spring mass system. So, if vibration is free, that is when no external force is applied, F of t will be equal to zero. If the system is undamped, then C dy by dt will be equal to 0. There are four cases. The first case is when the motion is free and undamped. In this case, C dy by dt will be equal to 0 and F of t will also be equal to 0. Now, on substituting 0 in the corresponding places of the general equation, we obtain m y double dash of t plus k y of t of t is equal to 0. In dividing by m, we obtain y double dash of t plus k by m y of t which is equal to 0. We know that k by m is omega square. So y double dash plus omega square y is equal to 0. Taking y common and trying to convert it into auxiliary equation. Here we, we are not using m because m has some meaning here which is mass. So instead we are using r. So r square plus omega square is equal to 0. So r is equal to plus or minus omega i which are the roots. And we observe that they are imaginary. Now the complementary function will be C1 cos omega t plus C2 sin omega t. There are few important formulas. The period of motion is given by t is equal to 2 pi by omega. And here we know that omega is 2 pi into root of m by k. So natural frequency of vibration omega is given by root of k by m. The maximum vertical displacement amplitude is given by square root of C1 square plus C2 square which are the arbitrary constants in this complementary function. The next case is that of free damp motion. So f of t will be equal to 0 in this case. On applying 0 there we observe that this is a homogeneous equation and we can solve as we solve the other homogeneous equations. The next one is forced and damped motion. In this case c dy by dt will be equal to 0 and on applying 0 we obtain this. Then the next case is forced damped motion. Here there is no 0. And this is the equation we obtain and this looks like a non-homogeneous differential equation. Let's check out an example. A mass weighing 4 pounds is attached to a spring whose spring constant is 16. What is the period of simple harmonic motion? From the question we understand that it is free undamped motion. So the mass is given by w by g which is 4 by 32 which is equal to 1 by 8. And the vertical, dis vertical displacement here we are considering to be x is calculated by this. Here 1 by 8 d squared x by dt squared plus 16x is equal to 0 because f is 0 and c dy by dt is also equal to 0. Now on substituting it and then finding the solution complementary function we see that c1 cos 8 root 2 t plus c2 sin 8 root 2 t to be the complementary function. Now we have to find the time period. So period of motion t is equal to 2 pi by omega. We know that the complementary functions of the form c1 cos omega t plus c2 sin omega t. So omega is 8 root 2. So 2 pi by 8 root 2 is given by root 2 pi by 8 seconds which is the period of the motion. Period of motion. Here's another sample. A mass weighing 4 pounds is attached to a spring whose constant is 2. The medium offers a damping force that is numerically equal to the instantaneous velocity. The mass is initially released from a point 1 foot above the equilibrium position with a downward velocity of 8 feet per second. Determine the equation of motion. 
From the question, we understand that it is free damped motion. So, m is equal to 4 by 32, which is equal to 1 by 8. It is given that the damping constant is beta, which is equal to 1. And the spring constant is 2. On substituting all these in the general equation, we obtain 1 by 8 d squared x by dt squared plus dx by dt plus 2x is equal to 0. This is the general equation. d squared x by dt squared plus 8 dx by dt plus 16x is equal to 0. On solving this, we obtain the complementary function to be c1 plus c2t into e to the power of minus 4t. We have a few initial conditions where it says that initially it is released from one foot above the equilibrium position. So x of 0 is equal to minus 1 and with a downward velocity of 8. So which is x dash of 0 which is equal to 8. On substituting all these we obtain that the complementary function is 4t minus 1 into e to the power of minus 4t. Here's a third sample for you all. A mass of one slug when attached to a spring slutches it two feet and then comes to rest in the equilibrium position. Starting at t is equal to 0, an external force equal to f of t which is equal to 8 sine 4t is applied to the system. So we have to find the equation of motion in the surrounding medium of force a damping force numerically equal to 8 times the instantaneous velocity. So this question is related to a force damp motion. So the general equation is m d square x by dt square plus beta dx by dt plus kx which is equal to f of t. Now on substituting the values we obtain this as the equation and on solving this we obtain this as the complementary function. They have given a few initial conditions. So x of 0 is 0 and x dash of 0 is equal to 0 as they have mentioned. On substituting in this equation on and applying the value of 0 after differentiating it, we obtain this the values of c1 and c2 that is arbitrary constants and then the complementary function particular solution will be this. Here are a few more sample questions which you can practice. All these problems are very important and we have a lot of real life applications of linear second order differential equations to practice all these. All the very best and this is the end of the module. Thank you.